Tier, Associate Research Scholar and Lecturer in Politics and Public Affairs, Princeton University. Uh, all right, Lauren, what happens if the magical and much promised conviction of Donald Trump doesn't happen? Well, likely the same thing that's happening right now, which is there's a slight majority of Americans who think these things are very bad and that he did commit these crimes, but it's very, very low on their list of priorities. And that's sort of what you and I are always talking about. How important is the issue? And if asked about the issue, how disturbed by it are you? But you know, these news stories keep coming out. They didn't affect the GOP primary whatsoever. And even though we know it could alienate swing voters, a lot of that's absolutely baked into the polls you're talking about. No, I get that. But we've been told by Democrats over and over and over again that, Joe, that Donald Trump's legal troubles are going to catch up with him. And they always point to all of these coming cases. But if, in fact, not only isn't he tried and convicted, but the cases keep falling apart. Yes. Doesn't that I mean, group of people, doesn't that, doesn't that do the opposite? If 10% if of people were going to not vote for him because he had a felony conviction, doesn't it say, well, maybe 10% more would vote for him? I don't know if it does the opposite, but it certainly gives people an excuse to set these problems Trump has aside and say maybe they're politically motivated after all. Maybe there's more to this story because... Look, if you look at the Fulton County case, a lot of experts examining that thought this is probably the best example of hard evidence of Trump's wrongdoing. He's literally on a tape pressuring the secretary of state to find votes. So what else do you need? But then, of course, the lead prosecutor and the DA are involved in this absolute disaster and scandal. And so when people look at that, similar to how Joe Biden also had documents he shouldn't have had, those are the types of pieces of information they weigh when they think, OK, maybe it's not so bad. It's sort of just a way around it for voters. All right. We think about some of the splits right now. Uh, nationally, it's about 44 Trump, 42 Joe Biden. That leaves an awful lot. That's, that's 14 points, right, of, of undecideds um, yeah. in there. How much of that gets decided based, you think, on these legal issues? Very little, because the legal issues are nowhere near the top of the list. They're nowhere near inflation, which people are still angry about, and Democrats don't really seem to understand that. People are still climbing out of the financial hole. Uh, not as high ranked as crime, not nearly as high ranked as immigration. And, you know, Democrats are absolutely right that we're very far away from the election and many things can happen. That's absolutely true. But if they don't look at these head to head matchups and think this is absolutely yeah. so dangerous for us, I don't know what they're thinking because Trump's got more baggage than any modern presidential yeah. candidate ever has. And he's beating oh, in Joe so Biden some of these swing states. Yeah. I guess the flip side also is a lot of things good could happen for Donald Trump um, as well. Lauren, we appreciate it. Thank you as always. Good to see you. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.